We continue our reading of the book of Hebrews, coming to chapter 10 today. We'll read the first 18 verses. You'll find it in your pew Bible on page number 1,282. The topic's an important one, the relationship of the Old Testament blood sacrifices, atoning sacrifices, to the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. And if you remember, the writer of Hebrews is addressing Jewish Christians who are being pressured to renounce Jesus and go back into Judaism, to have a Christless old covenant. And what the writer of Hebrews appeals to them here is how impossible that was. The Old Testament itself had no meaning, no validity, no value, except as it was related to the Christ who had come. Uh, He makes the argument, verse 1 of the important statement, the law has but a shadow of the good things to come. That's an interesting statement because we normally think, and we rightly say, well, the Old Testament is anticipatory of the coming of Christ. But the way he puts it is it's actually Christ casting his shadow. It's not the Old Testament producing Christ. It's Christ who produces everything that ever had validity in the Old Testament. It's like an object and the sun shines on it, a person, and the shadow goes back. That's what the law was, the reflection, the the uh, the casting back of Christ prior to his coming, of what value could it be then once Christ, Christ was renounced? Now, he makes important statements here about the atoning work of Jesus, namely its character as a once-for-all sacrifice that does not need to be repeated because it has effectually dealt with the problem of the guilt of our sins. He points out that Old Testament priests didn't have chairs in the holy place because they were always making sacrifices. Their work was never done. But Jesus sat down at the right hand of the Father when he had offered his blood. That work was done. It was once and for all in that very language. Look at verse 14. By a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Uh, God's working in our lives. We're being made holy. That's part of Christianity. But the work of dealing with our sin is a once-for-all work accomplished by Jesus Christ, received through faith. It means that when you put your trust in Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, all your sins. The blood of God's Son cleanses us from all our sins. It does so forever. You are set free from the fear of guilt and condemnation, the bondage of your sins. Now, dare I say this is one reason why Bible-believing Christians cannot participate in the Roman Catholic Mass. There are other reasons, but Rome sees their Mass as an ongoing sacrifice. The priest is re-sacrificing the Lord Jesus. How could that be in light of this passage? No, Jesus shed his blood once for all. It is accomplished. What did he say on the cross? It is finished. We praise the Lord for that. I think my favorite statement in the whole chapter is where he points out that Jesus accomplishes the old covenant and he establishes the new. He says in verse 9, it's Jesus speaking in the Old Testament, Behold, I have come to do your will. In the place of our need where we could never be forgiven, Jesus came forth. He did the will of his Father. He died on the cross for our sins. Praise the Lord. Well, let's give ear to the reading now of God's holy, inerrant, and life-giving word, Hebrews 10, 1 to 18. For since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come instead of the true form of these realities, it can never by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, they have not, would they not have ceased to have been offered? Since the worshipers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have any consciousness of sin? But in these sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he said above, you have neither desired nor take pleasure in sac- taking pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law, then he added, behold, I have come to do your will. 
He does away with the first in order to establish the second. And by that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemy should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them, after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins no more and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. The grass withers, the flowers fall, and the word of our God abides forever and ever. Amen.